Recently, I've been interested in making wings using 3mm Depron. I've had a lot of success with 6mm Depron, but uh, I wanted to see if I could make some really lightweight wings, uh, lightweight aeroplanes with 3mm Depron. Would it be stiff enough? Uh, what sort of bracing would I need? Uh, sort of inspired by the awesome uh, U-Glider, which is a really lightweight thermal flyer, slope sawer if you will, has really nice long uh, high aspect ratio wings, 1.5 meter wingspan and 12 centimeter uh, wide wings. I had a lot of success with the uh, ultralight aerobatic slope sawer. That's three millimeter Depron with six millimeter uh, formers and a six millimeter spar. I sort of make up test folds like this. We've got six millimeter former there uh, that ended up, what was it, 175 millimeter cord with big 50 millimeter ailerons. What I thought I'd like to do is make up a thermal sawer, uh, three channel, no ailerons, uh, out of folded three millimeter Depron. So I'll just sort of go through the thinking process and the design process that uh, I used to arrive at these designs. So this is a a test fold of a 3mm Depron wing, 3mm former there. Uh, now my sheets of Depron are 700mm wide so I thought wingspan of two of these 1400mm, uh, I want a 1 in 10 aspect ratio wing so that means the cord is going to be 140mm so that's wingspan of 1.4m cord length of four, uh, 14 centimetres or 140 millimetres. Work out how thick I want the cord to be. I want it to be as thin as possible really so that's three millimetre former in the middle or spacer. Gives it about a nine or ten millimetre uh, cord thickness. It'll be an eight or nine percent airfoil which is nice for a really slim glider. So what I started off with was uh, 11 centimeter bottom section and 14 centimeter top section and after the test fold I worked out that that actually leaves you about five millimeters three three four five millimeters short so that tells me that I actually need to add maybe four or five millimeters to the top part of the fold so this is what I've come up with so I get my sheet of Depron bottom folded section will be 11 centimeters that's that bit there fold over the top will be 14 centimeters plus another five just for losing a bit in the fold over and, and I can slice off the back of it as well say 255 millimeters by 700 millimeters then I'm going to cut that out best to have a nice sharp blade so then we just cut that to size. Now I think what I'm going to do is put a 3mm by 0.5mm edge on spar and glue it onto the back of the, or the front of that former or in the middle, I'm not too sure yet. And I don't have any in stock so I've had to order some so uh, I'll have to wait until that comes in before I actually put it in. But I can do, but I can get it started anyway. So what I'm going to do now is laminate this you can just cover it with tape if you want to or you can use iron on document laminating film and uh, let's do that now. Now this is the document laminating film that I use uh, 1.7 mil or 42.5 micron and the other one is 3 mil or 75 micron film. The 75 micron stuff is what I use mostly on most of my normal normal sized planes uh, that's nice and tough adds a lot of strength and durability this thinner stuff is uh, better for a really lightweight build the problem with these things is that they come in big rolls so you just got to bite the bullet and buy a big roll and share it with your friends or something like that now I don't think this particular variety exists anymore so you, you sort of got to look for something similar um, yeah, but it's designed for laminating machines and just for laminating documents and posters and stuff like that. 
it's a lot cheaper than normal iron-on film. I'll put a link in the description for something similar to this, but you can just sort of search online, see if you can find small rolls like this. Uh, they'll be about 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Or some hobby shops will sell it by the meter as well. I'm not going to sell mine by the meter because uh, I, I use it all the time and I don't want to have to go and buy another roll, so uh, no point asking me, I'm afraid. So this is very easy because I'm just ironing it on a flat piece of Depron. If you need to go around curves and corners and things like that, you need to cut little tabs and sort of overlap them. And uh, I've shown you in different videos how to do that anyway. Iron needs to be about half heat or the wool setting, whatever it takes so that you don't melt the Depron, but uh, you do melt the uh, uh, adhesive, and then it's just a matter of ironing it out. Start from the centre and move towards the outside. Don't leave the iron in one spot for too long. Make sure you've got all the wrinkles out. And that is pretty good. It takes a bit of practice, but as long as you do a few test irons, then uh, you'll be fine. So that's adhered really well and stops the Depron from breaking when you bend it. Next step is to score a line where the leading edge is going to be. And mine is 11 centimetres from this back underneath folded edge. I've got a sort of a rounded off stick that I've made specially for it. Put a dent, basically, in there. So now I need to uh, put in the former. So that 3mm former there is 20mm wide and it's 45mm back from the leading edge back from this point here, so 45 millimetres there. And also on this sort of trailing edge join here, or sub-trailing edge, if that's the trailing edge, this might be the sub-trailing edge or whatever you want to call it, but uh, from about 20 millimetres to the end, I've actually beveled that down there or sanded it to a, uh, a nice bevel so that this top layer glues on nicely and sort of makes a nice airfoil shape and to get a nice sort of thin trailing edge on the control surface I've actually sanded down that part there as well. So we need a line 20 millimeters in from this edge here and I'll sort of sand that down not all the way down to the to the uh, laminate but uh, leaving a millimeter or so and why is that at 45 millimeters well the overall uh, cord length is going to be 140 and we want the maximum thickness sort of around 35 40 percent I suppose so roughly 45 millimeters on this test fold uh, gives a nice airfoil this is my latest three millimeter Depron build it's a three channel u-glider type thermal glider it weighs 270 grams at the moment, so you could conceivably make it under 250 grams with a bit more attention to keeping it light. I have a U-glider motor on the front, motor and prop, no ailerons, it means the wing's quick and easy to build. I don't have any spars in the wing at the moment and it probably does need some, so it's going to be a little bit floppy. Let's see how we go. It's a floater. The idea is it's going to be a very low wind thermal glider. Look at the wings flexing. <laughs> I do need a spa there. But that is just beautiful. Turning beautifully with just the rudder. Yeah. Wow, that's going to just keep on climbing. Oh, 
<laughs> oh dear. Oh, a bit of turbulence up there. Bit of gusting. Oh, I don't like the way the wings flexing. Let's just fly it around normally. Need some down trim. Wind is a little bit too strong for it, really. Well, interesting. It's flexing a bit. Be better with no wind at all, I think. Let's just fly it around a bit more. Changed around, has it? Yeah, it definitely has. Wind's gone right around to. We lost the list lift off the. Definitely going to float. Need to get up a bit higher. Interesting.